eternal God, our Father, we do thank you afresh for all of the mercies and kindness that you showered upon us. We thank you for keeping us safe from day to day. And we pray that as we make choices that they'll be pleasing to you and that you'll use us as instruments of your peace and spreaders of your love. And that love will go not just from classmate to classmate or church member to church member, but from every person that we encounter, that they might know the relationship we have because of who you are. Bless this church. Bless this mission, this message, this finances. Bless me as you use me to make a difference. Keep me humbled and settled and set, focused and forgiving. Thank you for the help that you've given me in this ministry, these men of God that share this pulpit with me, uh, for the deacons who are my armor bearers, my helpers in this ministry, for uh, the love and sacrifice that they make, for every contribution, for every connection. God is so great, Jehovah. Hold us and hide us and keep us in your care. Bless your word, your way, and your will for our lives. It's in the name of him who died for us, but didn't stay dead. It is in the name of our risen Christ that I pray. And all believers and those that covenant prayer with me said amen. 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 For those of you that have your Bible or have access to a Bible, we're going to ask you to turn to uh, the gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter. And I'll read the first 10 verses. Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Thank you for standing in reverence and recognition of the Word of God. And I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. And it reads, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing, <coughs> Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation have come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. God's word for God's people. We want to tag this text. Lord, add life to my years. Lord, add life to my years. Uh, we know that we embrace the presence of many who graduated high school, and for some of uh, them and some of us, that's heading toward uh, some of them 30, 40 years, some of us 50, 60 years. And uh, life has not been a crystal star. Uh, and so often we want life, but and to us that means more years. But I want more life to my years. Uh, I want to just live. I want to live so that I please God. I want to live so that I have fun going to heaven. I want to live so that I have life to my years, that I can smile when I see folks and don't have to hide, duck, or dodge, or frown because of their memories of me or my memories of them. Yeah. Lord, add life to my years. Uh, 
I want to share this because I've said this to a couple of places and folks look at me strange and sometimes without explanation they think that uh, we're bragging. Those of you who are here celebrating uh, high school graduations and reunion is, I need you to know that uh, you each earned a PhD. Each one of you have a PhD. It does not matter what other accumulations uh, that you went on to accomplish. I'm, I'm looking at uh, lawyers and doctors and uh, entrepreneurs, owners of daycares, and uh, looking at nurses and uh, all kinds of professions that have gone on to, to make a difference in life. I'm looking at engineers and, and, and those kind of accomplishments, but what you did the night that you graduated from high school, mm -hmm. when you walk across that stage, you earned a PhD. Uh, now, later on, you may get one that's not smelled with all capital letters. You may get one that's uh, spelled P-H point D. But you got a public high school diploma. And if you don't have one, you ought to get one. <laughs> no matter what other degree you get in life, it started with what you did that night with your PhD, with your public high school diploma. Uh, you, 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 you didn't get it from a, pr a private school. You didn't get it from a parochial school. You didn't get it from a charter school. You got a public high school diploma. And to me, uh, that was all that was required. For most of us in the black community, in my day, it was determined, it was not arbitrary that you were going to get a PhD. You, you, you were going to get a public high school diploma. Uh, you didn't have to go to college, but you had to get your <laughs> Amen. Uh, some of us didn't qualify to go on to college to even get an uh, a, a associate degree, but you had to get and it, it took you longer than anything else you could accomplish. It took you longer than any other degree, your doctorate degree or your uh, master's degree. Didn't take as long as the 12 years you spent to get your PhD. Fact of the matter, without the PhD, you couldn't get the other degree. We've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to increase the intensity of that among us as people. Right. We've got to increase the intensity of that and, and go back to the old landmark because uh, when we've got uh, something like 31% high school dropouts among black folks, Amen. we need to tell our children and their children, you're going to get. Right. If you don't get nothing else, you're going to get a PhD. Right. And I don't care if it looks like a GED, you're going to get. <laughs> A PhD. It's your responsibility. You are now your parents' age or beyond when you got yours, when you finished. And, and, and when you look at uh, that in Alabama, 74% of disabled people finish high school on time. So don't look, back, don't look down on, on folks who have disabilities and folks who uh, have learning curve difficulties because they struggle harder than you. It took more out of them to get just what you could have got naturally. And because you're here celebrating your high school uh, reunion and the day that you got your PhD, go ahead and give your health a hand. The text from Luke 19 is a great parable. Zacchaeus knows that something is missing from his life. There's an emptiness, a vacuum, a gnawing hunger deep down in his soul. Even though he has become a wealthy man through his shaded tax collecting practices, he is not happy. He is unsatisfied and unfulfilled. He is thirsting for something more. So he comes to Jesus looking for the answer and he finds it, or better yet, Jesus finds him. It's a brief story about a man's encounter with Jesus, Amen. but it dramatizes the good news of the Christian faith. Right. 
it reveals dramatically the gospel's openness to all kinds of people. Yeah. It demonstrates the meaning of Jesus' mission statement in Luke. I have come to seek and save the lost. But what really makes a great story is its relevance to our time. Uh -huh. And the images that we're able to extract from it about ourselves that can be found in the life of this man, Zacchaeus. Yeah. We see the image of those who are willing to sacrifice family, friends, and relationship to get ahead, to be a success, to achieve position, power, and wealth. The story also reflects how meaningless and unfulfilling this kind of achievement can be. In Zacchaeus, we discover the kind of restlessness that many of us have in our lives, that hunting feeling that caused some of us to cry, is this all it is to life? Yeah. Is this all it is after going on to school, after abandoning friends' relationship, turning my back on the church and family uh, to go out and accomplish and to be somebody that I think I want to be? And then when I look in the mirror, I don't even like who I see. Is this all it is? Uh, to live a lonely life because I have to lie and cheat and deceive and scrape and, 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 and try to embellish my own self in order to have some self-worth? Is this all it is? Amen. Zacchaeus had been there and understood that, and he wanted to see Jesus, who they were talking about, who they told him could make a difference in his life. And he wanted to say to him and say to him in substance, Lord, I've had some good years. <laughs> but they've been unfulfilling. And what I need you to do is add some life to my years. So when I walk down the streets, folks will speak to me. When they see me, they won't say something in my face and something else behind my back. Because I act like I was all of that in a bag of potato chips and I don't remember when we shared a bologna sandwich. Burnt bologna. Y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Zacchaeus discovered that he needed to add life to his years. His venture to see Jesus was really a search for meaning and a search for life. He must have wanted it desperately because he took the risk of being ridiculed and climbed up a sycamore tree to get a glance of Jesus. That's right. Just to get a glimpse of him because he knew he was passing that way. Yeah. What was it that attracted Jesus to him? What was it that made Jesus stop in his tracks yeah. and interrupt his journey <laughs> on his way to Jerusalem right. to spend some time with Zacchaeus, a tax collector? an outcast in the people's eyes. Uh -huh. Was it the incongeniality of a grown man up in a tree? Was it perhaps his vulnerability climbing out on a limb just to look over the crowd? Was it the beginning of humility to go to such length to encounter Jesus? Or was it the quiet desperation in his face or the lack of life in his eyes. We don't know what Jesus saw when he looked at Zacchaeus, but evidently when Zacchaeus looked at Jesus yeah. and looked into his encouraging eyes, he saw the new life he could have. Right. He saw the new Zacchaeus he could become. He saw the Zacchaeus he wanted to be and was meant to be. We are not sure what all happened. We don't know all the intricate details. We do not know what Jesus and what made Jesus stop or invite Zacchaeus to come down and Zacchaeus responded. We don't know what they discussed in Zacchaeus' house. We only know that Zacchaeus was dramatically changed in his attitude, his lifestyle, his morality, his generosity, and in his care for other people. In the Gospel of John, Jesus expressed his mission statement and purpose. I have come that you might have life 
and that you might have it more abundantly. That's what this story is all about. In Jesus, Zacchaeus found life, uh -huh. and he found it more abundantly. Yeah, man. Isn't that what Zacchaeus was looking for? Wouldn't you like to not only add years to your life, but also add life to your years? Yeah. Zacchaeus really wanted to know, really wanted to live before he died. And I have a feeling that many of us can relate to that. That's why the Zacchaeus story is so important to us. Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus underscores the ingredients needed to add life to our years. First of all, to add life to our years, we need a healthy relationship with God. Yeah. It's critical to have a spiritual dimension in our lives, mm -hmm. a vital connection with the divine, yeah. or more simply put, a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Zacchaeus realized that something was missing in his life. For all that he had achieved and accomplished, he still felt unsatisfied and alone because there was no spiritual dimension in his life, yeah. no connection with the eternal, and no relationship with the Creator. Uh -huh. In reality, it may, in reality, it makes life miserable. Yeah, life is made in such a way, and we're created by God for God. Yeah. We're not just citizens of the physical and material dimension. Amen. There's something within each of us yeah. that cries out for more than just material things Amen. and physical satisfaction. Jesus expressed it in his temptation experience. Matthew 4 and 44, he said, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. We have the image of God himself. When the Ecclesiastes writer writes, God has put eternity into man's mind. Amen. We are not made to be satisfied nor fulfilled by only a human dimension. Yeah, right. And yet we persist in trying. And if we keep trying that, we'll remain discontented. Somebody should have heard that. Yeah. If you keep doing the same thing you've been doing, you'll keep getting the same thing you've been getting. Zacchaeus discovered this about life, but he also discovered what to do about it. He went to see Jesus and found in him the answer to his emptiness and received a spiritual dimension, a vital connection with God, and therefore he was able to add life to his years. Lord, add life to my years. To add life to our years, mm -hmm. we need to know the shepherd right. and to have a spiritual dimension and a vi vi vital connection to the divine. The second thing we need to do is add life to our years. We need a healthy regard Amen. for other people. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's vital to live a life that reaches out with love for others. The most evident and outward result of Zacchaeus' experience with Jesus is that his life focus changed from himself to others. Right. He is now concerned about his neighbor, his relationship with them, and their need. Zacchaeus learned the hard way yeah. that looking out for number one was a self-defeating and lonely existence. Yeah. He found that life was best experienced in reaching out to others. There's a cartoon. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember Peanut? Yeah. <laughs> There's a cartoon about Peanut and, and, and Lucy. Mm -hmm. Lucy had a little brother named Linus. Mm -hmm. uh, and she thought it was time for him to give up his security blanket. Mm -hmm. And so while he was asleep, taking his afternoon nap, she slipped in and 
took his blanket and took it out and buried it in the ground. When Linus woke up and realized that his security blanket was gone, he, he goes into a mind-boggling panic attack. He can't breathe and uh, he's just uh, furious and he screams that uh, he has to have that blanket, that he could not live without that blanket. Yeah. Snoopy, y'all remember him? Yeah. He lived a dog life. <laughs> Snoopy walks by and sees Lana's big problem and Snoopy comes to the rescue. Snoopy works it outside and uh, with his trusted nose, sniff around until he finds the blanket. He digs up the blanket and dashes back inside and returns it to the grateful Linus. With one hand, Linus grabs the blanket, and with the other hand, arm around uh, Snoopy, he hugs him and thanks him excitedly, telling Snoopy that uh, he has saved his life. <laughs> Linus is elated. And he and Snoopy celebrates and dance for joy over his reunion with his spiritual uh, tournament, tourniquet, his blanket. In the final sense, Snoopy is laying on top of his doghouse. Yeah. And the capture over his head has this thought. Every now and then, my existence is justified. <laughs> when do you feel the most alive? Amen. When do you feel that your existence is justified? Uh -huh. Is it when you are doing something worthwhile mm -hmm. for someone else? Mm -hmm. When you love others yeah. more than yourself? Mm -hmm. When is it that you can feel good about life and the years that you've lived as you look back and realize that you don't want to just live, but you want to have life while you yeah. live. That you don't want to just wait to die and then somebody say good things about you right. at your funeral. Amen. Jesus was right. Mm -hmm. This is the way life works. We experience life best when we have a healthy relationship with God Amen. and a healthy regard for other people. Third and finally, to add life to our years, we need a healthy reason of hope. We need to know that we're going somewhere, and we got somewhere to look forward to going. We need a healthy relationship with God. We need a healthy relationship with others, and we need hope for tomorrow. It's so important in life to have something to look forward to, uh -huh. something to hope for, Amen. something to put your trust in. Yes. Am I right? Yes. You got to have some kind of hope. But somebody said if you don't stand for something, <laughs> you'll fall for nothing. Right. Robert Frost describes those who miss real life in one of his poems. He said those who miss real life and have no life with their years have nothing to look forward, nothing to look backwards to with pride, and nothing to look forward to with hope. What's more pertinent and a more adequate description of the missed life can there be? You can't look back and be happy or proud, Amen. and you have nothing to look forward to. That's just walking dead. Right. But not so for Zacchaeus. His backward look was tainted, but because of Jesus, he had something to look forward to each day. Not only then, but for eternity. We all need hope. Right. We all need something to look forward to. We need the ability to move into the future without fear of dread. Because if we lose hope in the future, our life in the present becomes powerless, empty, stagnant, and desolate. 
As Christians, we have hope because we have the promise of continual new beginning, yeah. fresh stars. We believe in sanctifying grace. And we have in the hope that God will continue to perfect us, grow us, and challenge us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Every day is something new. Uh, we may not understand it now, but we understand it better by and by. The Paul, Apostle Paul writing to Christians in Rome expressed that hope powerfully. He says to us in Romans chapter 8, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall right. so, tribulation, or distress, persecution, or famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword? Knowing all these things will more than conquer us through him who loves us. For nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. When Paul Ozinga a pro golfer, was going through his battle with cancer. He was experiencing uh, what was uh, one of his lowest moments. Mm -hmm. uh, in his darkest moment, and uh, he was feeling sorry for himself. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Uh, his good friend, mm -hmm. Johnny Miller. And for those of you who are golfing fans know who I'm talking about, both in Zinger and Miller. So Miller came to visit Zynga, and, and, and he shared with him uh, all thoughts that he had about his accomplishments and what he wanted to accomplish. So Paul Zynga was uh, just down in the press and uh, menacing over what he thought he would do and could do if he could regain his health. Then he broke down and began to cry. John and Miller reached over and took his hand and uh, said to him, you know, Zinger, what really counts in life is not what we accomplish or what we achieve, but really what we overcome. Right. Most of us were born on the wrong side of the track. Yeah. Amen. Most of us were born to single parents. Most of us were born not with a silver spoon in our mouth. Uh, most of us was destined to not be successful. Uh, told that you wouldn't amount to much and that you would even finish high school. But you overcame it. So what matters in life is not what plagued you and pained you, but what matters most is that you've overcome. That you've done the best with what you had and that you are proud of what you've done and if not, today is the day of a new beginning, a new opportunity, a new chance. And so it is. What matters most is what we overcome. Hope in Christ's promise us that we shall overcome. It is hope that gives up life even in the midst of life's more difficult circumstances. As Christians, we have an eternal hope that our destiny is in God's hand. Yes. There's a story of a teenage girl who had leukemia. She was visiting with her pastor who had come to see her in the hospital. And she said to him, I wish I didn't have leukemia. Mm -hmm. But really, I'm not afraid. I know God is with me. Mm -hmm. And I know that he, that we are on good terms. Is there anybody here today yes. that can say that you know that you and God yes. are on good terms right now? Yes. I hope so. Right. I hope so. Because God is our hope. Yes. And if you're on good terms with him, I've got a feeling that everything yes. is going to be all right. Yes. We don't know what the future holds. But as Christians and followers of Christ, we know who holds the future. Would you like to add life to your years? Amen. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Right. Jesus came to offer life through faith, hope, and love. Yes. 
And can I just hang this on the lines of your mind? You'll even have to climb a tree to get it. You can come to him just as you are. Weary, wounded, and sad, and you'll find in him a resting place, and he'll make you glad. Lord, this is all a, a prayer that I can play because I know that what he gives us, it's a gift, and we only need to accept it. So I've learned to say to him, Lord, add life to my years. Uh, and, and I can say that because September is a wonderful month. Uh, Dr. William, birthday is today. Just wave at him and say, God bless you. Amen. My birthday next Thursday. And Lord, add some life to my, my years. Send the birthday next Tuesday. And Deborah, when your birthday? <laughs> we old enough now. Somebody. <coughs> Carla. <laughs> Sister Thomas. What you talking about? Lord. Come on, Orlando. <laughs> Lord. Add some years. To my life. But add some life. To my years. I want to live so I can hear him say, servant, well done. Thou have been faithful over a few things. Come on up high and I'll make you ruler over many. Some of you got a long way to go. And you think a lot of life ahead of you. But learn to make today count. Learn to make a difference. Make decisions that are eternal. That put you in the right light with him who is able to keep you from falling. And present you faultless before the old wise God with glory and dominion and power. Anybody here know him? Anybody here know him? At 33 and a half years, he gave up his life. No man took his life, but he gave up his life for his friends so that he could add life and life more abundantly. He was beat for us. With his stripes, we received salvation. His stripes would not heal my body. My faith in him would heal my body. His stripe was to save me from my sin. And Lord, no. Don't look at me like y'all always been holding. Wave your hands, yeah. <laughs> Lord, no. That we needed deliverance. But when I prayed, Lord, add some life to my years, I remember I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, sinking to rise. He came. He died. But he refused to stay dead. He died for our sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us all. He who came from heaven to earth to show us how to go from earth to heaven. He died. He died. He died. He died for our children, church, our young people that are coming in now. He died for those of you who got your PhD 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. He died. He died that we might have life and life more abundantly. Anybody here know him? I'm talking about know him for yourself. Because if you don't know him, you got to get to know him. Because you can have a whole lot of more years and you can have no life. You can die and spend eternity somewhere. And there are two places. That's heaven or hell. Both are real. Both are real. And you know how to get to both of them. Die in your sins, and you get to go to hell. Except Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. Chip did that this morning, did it last Sunday, was baptized this morning. He reserved a place in eternity to be absent from this body, to be present with the Lord. I want to add some life. I don't want to just uh, have to say praise the Lord, hallelujah. I want to be able to smile sometime. 
I want to smile at Satan's rage. And say, you got me one time, but I promise you, you won't get me no more. You have no power over me. No dominion over me. But I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Today is the day of your opportunity. That God can add life to your years. If you want to trust him. And you can do that by yourself. You don't have to depend on somebody else or being connected to somebody else. Somebody say, I've got Jesus. And that's enough. Christ makes the difference. The doors of the church open. This is the invitation to discipleship. You got to know him for yourself. You got to know how to treat other people. And then you got to keep hope alive. The doors of the church open. Who said